Coming up next, we have Jesse's neighbor. Eric's gonna. Well, he told me I need to start doing it for my marathon I signed up for. It's looking a little soft in the middle. Yeah, go, Eric. All right. Um, my name's Eric Storheim. I'm an addict, and it's been 22 minutes since my last run. Now, what does this have to do about pedicures? I'm not talking about an average pedicure. I'm talking about the one and only Wasatch pedicure. And the only way to get it is to run long distances through the Wasatch Mountains. Now, an ultra marathon or ultra running is defined as anything longer than 26.2 miles, typically 50K or 32 miles, up to 100 miles in distance. You can run around a track if you want to. You can run in your neighborhood. You can run in the mountains. My favorite, uh, my personal favorite is single track in the mountains. There's a purity to be found in grabbing a water bottle, lacing on a pair of shoes, and going for a run on pristine trails. There's a sense of empowerment that comes from covering large distances in the mountains um, by simply putting one foot in front of the other. Now, anyone can run these distances. Now, you may think that this is uh, um, an older gentleman watching a race. This is 77-year-old Grant Holdaway, who finished the Wasatch 135 hours and 58 minutes. He had two minutes to spare. Anyone can do it. Um, when I figure out why I run these distances, I'll, I'll, my wife will be the first to know because I haven't figured it out yet and she's asking me every day. Some people do it for the purity of running, uh, some people do it for running's sake, some people do it to shed pounds. Uncle Dave does it to shed his inner demons. Um, some people like to eat a gallon of ice cream at one time. I have been known to enjoy that, but I also like to focus on races and the epitome, the granddaddy, the Super Bowl of races to me is the Wasatch 100. Now this is not to be confused with the Ragnar Wasatch back relay. That's where you put on costumes, you ride in a van with five of your friends um, for a day and a night, and you have a chance to pay $100 to run a half marathon. I'm talking about the Wasatch back 100 mile endurance run. It's 100 miles through the high ridges of the Wasatch Mountains. It's 28,000 feet of climbing. It's 28,000 feet of descent. You have 36 hours to finish it. It's nickname is 100 miles of heaven and hell. I'm gonna take you on a brief tour of it. The first 25 miles, I typically feel really good. My legs are fresh, the sun's coming up, the scenery is great. I'm running with good friends and making new acquaintances. Then my legs start to feel after four or five hours, those first feelings of fatigue. Um, I get a few pangs of, uh, of despair, thinking what, you know, 80 more hours of this, or 80 more miles of this. It's imperative that I get those thoughts out of my head, that I focus on what's at hand putting one foot in front of the other so I don't end up looking like my friend Jim. Um, the midway point typically is very hot. You're dropping back down into Lamb's Canyon, Parley's Canyon, and it can get up to 100 degrees. Um, it's, uh, it would be really, really easy to sit down, grab a Coke, waste some time, and enjoy hanging out with my buddy here. Luckily, I've got, a, uh, uh, I've got an incredible um, support crew of family and friends. Some of them will run portions of the race with me, encouraging me to eat, to drink, to put one foot in front of the other, even when I feel absolutely horrible and I tell them just to go straight to hell. <clears throat> my family and friends, they also go from aid station to aid station with critical supplies for me. They're a lifeline to hold on to and to look forward to because at mile 75 at Brighton, it's dark, it's cold, I'm tired, and all I can think about is brushing my teeth. This is where the race really starts. It's the toughest 25 miles to go. Um, last year, I was in fourth place coming into Brighton. I felt great, I was absolutely gonna crush the course. And in reality, the wheels fell off. I started throwing up, reduced to a shambling walk. 11 people passed me, and I wanted to lay down my, like my friend Brian in a pile and a puddle of my own vomit. What keeps me going in situations like these? <clears throat> Why don't I just give up in, in despair? Uh, when I've hit the pain cave, I've hit the third, the fourth, the fifth wall. <clears throat> it's thinking of the sacrifice that my family has made as I've spent countless hours on the trail, of all the training that I've put, on, put in. It's, uh, it's the good time spent with friends and family. And when I do come to the finish line, I look like this. Um, <laughs> I feel like this. And as I try to explain what has happened over the past 25, uh, uh, 24, 25 hours and 100 miles, uh, my family just looks at me like I'm speaking gibberish and I'm talking to it like a, you know, I'm a raving lunatic. Again, why do I run these distances? When I finished the Wasatch 100 for the first time in 2005, for days, weeks, months afterwards, I felt invincible. I had just run 100 miles through the Wasatch Mountains in just under 25 hours. There was nothing that could stop me. Every race I have run since from 50K to 100 miles, I've learned a lesson about myself, about life, and what about what I'm really truly capable of. Um, I've made lasting friendships. Some of the best friends I'll have in my life have been spent with hours, you know, spend talking to them hours and hours on the trails. And I've come to understand 
that going for a run truly does clear my head, but running 100 miles distills my soul. And I'm able to participate and have a true Wasatch pedicure. If any of you are interested in making good friends on the trails and running these distances, go ahead and um, you can look it up at wasatch100.com. mrc-ultra.blogspot.com is a, is a blog that me and my friends run, or you can contact me personally. And make sure there's a Wasatch, Wasatch Running Center. for a run.